Hey guys, I am sick, I am wearing glasses, and that's just how it's gonna be. <laughs> Isaac just started preschool like two weeks ago, and so here begins where he gets the whole family sick over and over again for the next 12 years. So I'm doing a Q&A today. I asked on my Instagram if anyone had questions. I didn't get that many, but that's okay. It means I can spend a little bit more time on the ones that I do have, so I will just jump right into it. How often do you have to shop for groceries since a lot of the food you eat is fresh? Now, personally, when I'm just shopping for myself, like when I was in college living on my own, I only shopped once a week and I was eating predominantly the same as I am now, mostly raw foods. So I always buy things that will last at least a week or I won't buy too many things that won't, if you know what I mean. My foods like kale, pineapples, bananas, I can make those last a week and things that aren't looking so good near the end of the week I can freeze like bananas and other fruits and still use again into the next week or beyond that. How can you tell if something is or isn't vegan? What do I need to look for on packaging to make sure the product is vegan? I have such a hard time determining which is which and some very unassuming things will be non-vegan without my knowing. So what we're looking for is animal products, meat, dairy, eggs, fish, honey. Those are the things that you're looking to not be on labels. Um, some things are obvious, like a package of beef is not vegan and you don't even need to read the ingredients, but some things aren't. Some things have sneaky milk or sneaky eggs in them. Um, and a lot of things definitely don't need it, but it's there anyway. What comes to mind is like lime tortilla chips, like to Tostitos, Totinos, Tostitos. One's pizza rolls. <laughs> Our lime chips have milk in them for no reason at all. So I always, always read all labels unless it says certified vegan on it. And that's pretty rare. And if it doesn't say it, it doesn't mean that it isn't. It just means that it didn't pay to get that certification done. So I actually brought uh, some food here to show what I look for. First thing is you're going to look for is the allergy statement. It's at the very bottom and it's in bold. I don't know if you're going to be able to read this, but it says, by the way, this is like a Cliff Nut Butter. It's my dad's, but I still look. <laughs> It says it contains almonds, cashews, and coconut. And then it says, may contain peanuts, other tree nuts, milk, wheat, and soy. So what this is saying is that <clears throat> it is vegan, but it's made in the same factory, perhaps on shared equipment. So what you're actually looking out for is what it does contain and not what it may contain. Uh, sometimes people, we'll see that may contain and they'll just go ahead and avoid it anyway on the very very slight off chance that some milk did get into into the product um or some eggs did get into the product you know something like that um i don't encounter many situations like this because i do eat mostly raw um and i don't have to like check and make sure that a banana wasn't on shared equipment with meat, you know what I mean? That's the first thing that you're gonna look for is the allergen statement. It will tell you very clearly in bold what is in it that would not be vegan. Now the things that it's not gonna include in the bold are gonna be any meat extracts or gelatin. So if you're looking at candy or Pop-Tarts even, lots of Pop-Tarts have gelatin, you're gonna actually have to read the ingredients for gelatin or if you're Looking at a pack of ramen noodles, for instance, like the beef flavor, the chicken flavor is going to have beef extract or chicken extract, which is taken directly from animals. It's not artificial. If it is artificial, it will say the word artificial in front of it, which makes it vegan and safe to eat for a vegan. If you don't want to read them, I totally get it. There are apps right now. I know I used one a long time ago that was called like, is it vegan or something like that, where you snapped the barcode of food and it would tell you right away if it was or wasn't vegan, very easy. And I would assume that there, at this point in time, that there are even more of those that are higher quality with bigger food libraries. How do you declutter your possessions? I find so much attachment to things I own, even if I know I haven't used it in months and months. I think I've shared, I've shared pictures on my Instagram of this before, I'll try to include some right here, but I used to own so much junk, so much. 
I had created such extreme attachments to them. Um, generally from an OCD standpoint, like I was very afraid that like if someone, and it's going to sound totally rational because it's, and this was something that I had to overcome. Like I thought that if someone gave me an object, if I got rid of it, something bad would happen to that person. And yes, that's not possible, but it was something that sort of plagued me and gave me a lot of anxiety and caused me to hoard and keep a lot of stuff in it. At least I was like organized about it. I knew where everything was, but I had way too much of it and it was mostly trash. It, it, to be completely honest, it was mostly trash. One day, I made the biggest step that I could in the decluttering process and this was like the first time I ever decluttered. I just sit and look at all that stuff and just be so brutally honest with myself. Like I'd sit there and say, if I get rid of this, what what bad thing actually is going to happen? Nothing. If I get rid of this, am I going to freak out because I can't use it again? And it would be like trash. Like I knew I had this popcorn bag, empty bag of popcorn. And I just, I kept it forever. I couldn't get rid of it. And I had to look at it and say, I do not need I do not need this empty bag of popcorn. So I know that for most people, it's a little bit different. Like it's like sentimental objects or I don't know, just a shirt that they used to like and they just don't wear it anymore, but they don't want to get rid of it. It's not the same kind of attachment that I used to have to stuff. But I think the core of the situation is the same, is that you have to be brutally honest with yourself. Am I going to use this again or am I not going to use this again? And if you're not going to use it, there's no reason for it to be taking up space in your life. So that's what I did. I decluttered for the first time. I got rid of a good amount of stuff. I mean, compared to the stuff I used to own. And since then I've decluttered, decluttered on like a big scale, maybe four or five more times. And I recorded the most recent decluttering on this channel. And you can watch that. I think it's like a three part series and a room tour. So you can see the amount of stuff that I own now uh, way less, and I'll try to include a picture of that as well. What is the most difficult part of being a raw vegan? Honestly, for me, it's temptation <laughs> for cooked foods. I am not the kind of person that thinks that cooked foods are toxic. I just like to eat raw because it makes me feel good. And yeah, I don't think that there's anything necessarily wrong with eating cooked foods. I just know that when I eat a lot of them, over a long period of time, I just feel a little bit weighed down, a little bit tired, and I want something sort of fresh and alive to make me feel fresh and alive. <laughs> when I first went vegan, I, from that moment on, I never, ever, ever felt like I wanted to eat an animal product. I never was like, oh, that looks so good. I wish I could eat that. You know, I was immediately put off by all of it, and I have never felt ever that I wanted to eat an animal product since then. But now it'll be like I'm eating my kale or I'm eating my pineapple and I look over and I see like rice and I, I really want it, really want it. Do you have any good weight loss tips? I have a like top 10 weight loss tips video on my Graveyard Vomit channel. I will link below so you can watch it. But my biggest tip ever is just eat plants eat, if you can, all plants, whole plant foods, and lift weights. Diet is like 80% of weight loss. Physical activity is only like 20. Honestly, you can get away with losing a lot of weight without exercising once. That's the truth. But if you want to feel good, um, enhance your results, become stronger, I definitely recommend weightlifting of some type. Uh, cardio is great, but the more muscle you can build, the more fat that you can burn. And the last question is, what are your favorite recipes for dinner? I have three favorite dinner recipes. First one is sushi. Sushi is my favorite food. Vegan sushi is so easy to make. Nori with some rice, carrots, avocado, and cucumber. And that's it with like soy sauce, or in my case, because I don't eat gluten, I do liquid aminos instead. You can do tamari, coconut aminos, whatever you like, and it's super good. 
it's pretty easy to order vegan sushi as well if you go to a restaurant that offers sushi because they'll have like maki rolls or hand rolls or something which is one ingredient and you can just get an avocado roll or you can just get a cucumber roll. Another recipe that I featured in kind of a lot of my what I eat in a day videos is this kale salad that I just love and I know I need to make a singular recipe video for it but it's like it's literally my favorite it's, it's my favorite salad it's my favorite raw dinner and I eat it almost every day so it's kale raisins apple walnuts and then the dressing is just peanut butter liquid aminos and water and then lastly I make a soup it's I call it corn chowder but I mean it's I think it's just a soup that happens to have corn in it that's a little bit on the thicker side but basically it's like corn potatoes carrots like any vegetable you like in some broth with some plant milk and blend that up it's also one of my what I eat in a days and I will be making a dedicated recipe video for that but it's really good too so that is all of my questions I really hope you guys got some good information out of this as with any Q&A I do, if you have a question for me, please leave it below and I will try my best to answer it in the comment section. If you have the chance, please check out the description. Support, share, anything you can with my Patreon. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.